Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist and our mini series on being married to a Japanese person and our mini mini series on <laughs> raising kids with Japanese people. So we we're talking in a couple of previous videos about the difficulties involved in being a non-Japanese person married to a Japanese person. When I say we, there was a whole heap of people contributed. If you haven't had a look at those comments from the from the people who watch those videos, worth having a look at those comments because there's all sorts of people there who have lived the experience themselves and have all sorts of opinions and thoughts on it. Very interesting reading, very interesting comments. Kids. Kids is obviously a really big topic. I mean, you would have noticed on those previous videos... You know, there's a lot of big topics because mostly because of the cultural differences. That seems to be what generates most of the, the most difficult things to deal with. Is just our life experiences and our life expectations are, are often different when it comes to often important points. Obviously, the small points don't matter, but the important points do. And of course, then when it comes to to bringing children into the into the picture. You know, those of you who have kids will, will know that, you know, there's not much that brings out stronger thoughts or emotions in people than their kids. So when you have situations involving your kids where you have certain beliefs and certain expectations and your partner has different beliefs and different expectations, obviously it can make life difficult. So a few examples of that... Uh, Starting right at the beginning, right at the beginning is when babies are born here, usually what happens is the mother stays in the hospital a couple of days and then goes home to her parents' house, usually for about a month, depending on how, how quickly she recovers and how quickly the baby gets its strength usually about a month but we know people where the wife has actually gone home and stayed at her parents house for four months after after the baby was born and of course with the lifestyle that lots of Japanese workers have the result of that can be that the father doesn't get to see the kids very much at all for that first few months because you know he's got to go and visit and depending on where the parents house is as well if, if you're lucky and the parents' house is close to where you live, then you might be able to go visit. And again, this is assuming that it's a foreign, it's a non-Japanese husband with a Japanese wife. Obviously, if if it's a, a non-Japanese wife with a Japanese husband, it's going to be a slightly di different dynamic. But this is just because most of the mixed relate mixed marriages are between. Japanese wives and, and non-Japanese husbands, that's why I'm talking about it like this. Um, for the for the opposite, it would be a, a different situation, but again, that would be the Japanese person, if it's Japanese husband, this would be his expectation too. So, because that would have been his experience in his life, is this is what's normal and this is what they do. So, so if you're the non the non-Japanese husband, then you know, your wife's going to leave the hospital after a couple of days and then she's going to go off to her family home wherever that is if you're really lucky it's going to be somewhere nearby that you can drop by and visit if you're not so lucky it could be further away and and, and chances are that's where she'll go and that's what she'll she'll want to do and and for you to say oh no come home come home to our house um, it does happen it does happen there are examples of that happening um, in our particular case, we managed to make that happen, but it's really difficult because everybody thinks that's odd, everybody thinks that's strange, everybody thinks that's, thinks that's selfish, because the, the thinking here is that it's, the, the, it's not fair on the wife, it's not fair on the mother to, to have to go home and try and look after herself and the baby and the house that it's the best thing for the mother and the baby, it's the interest of the mother and the baby that they go and stay with the mother's parents. And the, the, the mother's parents will take care of the, the, the mother and the and the daughter and the, the baby and and the husband will just be back in the house on his own going off to work every day and taking care of the bills. And and as far as every most people here are concerned, that's the best thing to do. 
and that's what everybody will expect. The doctor will expect it, the mother will expect it, the parents will expect it, everybody else. So, you know, that can be difficult because coming from some of some of the cultures we come from, we think that that first month, you know, is really important um, to start bonding with the with the baby and the father straight straight away. And, and the idea of a month apart would be um, really really difficult for some people to swallow. So, difficult one to get around, hard to get around it. Probably the best you could come up with would be if you could to make yourself available to be able to to let her stay with her parents and, and, and you just go there as often as you can might be an op option for some people. Um, if you're lucky and you've got a big house and you can talk your mother-in-law into it, your mother-in-law can come stay with you. That's not a bad compromise either if you can make it happen, but you, you have to be prepared. If you find yourself going down this trail, if you've ignored the previous advice in previous videos and you find yourself marrying a Japanese person intending to have kids, You've got to expect that this is what they will expect. I mean, if you can reach a compromise, that's good, but you'll, you better prepare yourself to not be able to reach a compromise. Because, we, again, with all these videos, it's the same story. We do know of exceptions. There are exceptions, but uh, usually exceptions are rare because that's the way it works in Japan. You know, in a lot of countries, everybody just does their own thing and you know whatever they think is the right thing to do is what they do. Whereas in Japan, it's not the way it works. Everybody, everybody tries to do everything the same way. That's the goal. That's everybody's goal. Most people's goal is to do everything the way it should be done, the way it's done. And and it's sort of, that sort of leads on to another point too, is that is that there's already a set way things are done here. And the doctor and the mother-in-law and the aunts and, and all these people all agree that the best way to raise kids is this. And that, you know, then the kid's born, goes home to the parents' house for a month or two or three, depending on how long it takes the mother to recover. And that's the best way. Everybody accepts that. And and as with all, all things in Japan, if everybody accepts there's a certain way to do it, nobody's going to listen to you when, you when you've got another way, you know. And and with that, that, this leads on to something else as well. It doesn't matter if the opinion of the whole world is behind you. And this is quite often the case. We've talked about this on lots of previous videos where there, there are things, and in, you know, in lots of ways, in, in, in the, as far as technology is concerned, Japan's sort of living in the future, you know, but as far as, as far as society and a lot of society's ways are concerned, it's sort of like living back in the 1950s in some other countries. You know, a lot of the society things, a lot of the ways of thinking are really, you know, back in the 50s. As far as as far as a lot of it, now we'll get some examples of that. But but it doesn't matter if the world has agreed that something else is different. You know, it doesn't matter if the world thinks that has come to the conclusion. Now, an, an example might be um, that when babies and when kids get when kids get blocked noses and adults, we showed you on a previous video how they'll go and get they'll go to the doctor and have their nose suctioned. Right, so they, they're convinced, they're convinced that the best way, if you've got a cold and you've got a blocked nose, the best thing is to go to the doctor and he uses vacuum, puts vacuum right up into your nasal passages and sucks out all the congestion in your nose and your nasal passages because they're convinced that helps you recover quicker. And of course, what actually happens is they do that vacuuming thing and then because you've got a cold, uh, you know, an hour later, you're congested again because, you know, this is what's happening, isn't it? So, and again, if that, if, if that really was the best way to, to, to help people recover from a cold, the doctors around the world would do that, wouldn't they? Oh, you've got a cold, you better go get your nose vacuumed. But of course, outside Japan, it's not a terribly common thing, is it? Unless you've got some sort of major problem. Uh, but in Japan, it's a normal thing for kids and adults to have their noses vacuumed, which means what they'll do is your kid will be three months old or or six months old or six years old and have a cold and the mother will say right off to the doctor for a, get your nose vacuumed and the kid will go no because as you can imagine that's a really unpleasant experience and you can think you can think that no look it's a waste of time it's not going to achieve anything an hour later the, the kid's going to have a congested nose again it's not going to solve anything it's a waste of time and it's just unnecessary trauma on the child 
and I don't want my child to go through that. But in Japan, the doctor and the mother-in-law and the aunts and the lady next door and everybody else all think that getting your nose suctioned is good for you and that sending the kid off to be put through that trauma uh, is a good thing, right? And the fact that you think that it's not a good thing is just your opinion and that doesn't matter. And you can you can get the internet and you can you can show evidence from the internet from Harvard University or from you know any any you know the American American Medical Association, the Australian Medical Association, you can you can show them documentation that the whole world agrees that that's not a good idea and it won't matter. Because the Japanese way is and this goes across the board with most of the stuff here is that is that it's the consensus of of the group here so it's whatever the group here agree is best is what everybody goes most people go along with and that anybody that thinks anybody that thinks that you know it's not, not the way to go or has another opinion that they they obviously think they're smarter than everybody else and nobody likes that and I've, I've been told this myself early on when I first came here, if I had an opinion that was different from the, the, the opinion of the group, I was told, you know, your problem is you think you're smarter than everybody else. They don't like it. They don't like it. So, so and th this is where it comes with your kids. This is what happens with your kids is the doctor says this is what you got to do. Or just the nurse says. That's, that's all it takes because the way the Japanese system works, you know, if the nurse says this is what you need to do, then, then your Japanese wife will say, oh, okay, that's what we need to do then. And when she tells you and you say, well, no, that's no good, and you get on the internet and you search it and you say, is it a good idea to vacuum a kid's nose when they've got a cold? And that what you read is that, look, you know, it's not really going to make any, there's not really any benefit to it, so it's not really worth the trauma. And you say, look, look, it says here on the internet, you know, it's not worth the trauma. This is the medical association saying it's a bad idea. It doesn't matter. The nurse at the hospital said it's a good idea. And, you know, the way it works in Japan, anybody that's got any sort of position, so usually doctors, sensei, but anybody can be sensei. Anybody who is some sort of, is knowledgeable of any topic. And you'll get this all the time from your Japanese partner, as they'll tell you, sensei said, sensei said this. So that's what we got to do. And you say, who, who said that? Oh, the person there, you know, they said that. And it can drive you nuts because sometimes sensei could be a salesman. We've seen this before. You know, anybody that's supposed to be the expert on the topic, doesn't matter who it is. And the Japanese way of thinking, the, a lot of us come from cultures where we have very critical thinking. And if, if somebody tells us something, we look at it critically and go, oh, really? I mean, you've only got to look at the comment section under here. There's always someone that says, yeah, that can't be right. What you're saying can't be right, you know? Everybody questions what they hear. Um, whereas here, it's not what people do. If you question what you're hearing, then that, that, that means that you think you're smarter than everybody else. Because the Japanese thinking, we made a video called The Hive Mentality, and, and the Japanese thinking, it's the group has come up with these conclusions. It's not one person. The, the whole group, all the people who've come before us, you know, hundreds of years of doctors and, and all the people who've come before us have come to these conclusions. And if you have a different opinion, that means you think you're smarter than all those people. And it's interesting because they, they accept the consensus of the group and the group must be right and they all go along with what the group thinks is the right thing. Um, but it's only the Japanese group. If you try and say, look, you know, that's only in Japan that you guys do that. Outside Japan, the rest of the world doesn't do that anymore. They don't care. You know, we made a video previously talking about the contraceptive pill. And again, it's again good example of being back in the 50s is that is that we made a video about the contraceptive pill. Told you that 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 when we when you talk about it with people here, like oh, it's dangerous, it's dangerous. You know, you can't take the pill. And there are ladies here that do take the pill, but but not as many as they would be in a lot of other societies and cultures because because the general belief here, if you talk to the, the average doctor here and the average mother-in-law and the, the, the aunts and the lady next door and everybody else is they'll tell you, oh, have an eye, have an eye. The pill, the contraceptive pill's dangerous. Um, it's dangerous for the woman's health. Um, if she takes the pill, there's a good chance she'll never be able to have kids. And if she does have kids, they might not be healthy. And, 
all these reasons why, why the pill's a bad thing, why the contraceptive pill's a bad thing. And you know, it doesn't matter how much stuff you show them. So look, look, that was true back in the 60s, but you know, they've refined it now, so it's not a problem. And taking the contraceptive pill now is a perfectly normal thing to do in most countries. They don't care. And it's the same as this is what you come up with when it comes to the raising the kids, is that the, the, their ideas, so the health thing's a huge thing, because there's a lot of health stuff, like the vacuuming the nose and things like that, and the funny ideas, and the wearing the masks. A uh, professor at, a Tokyo, at Tokyo University did a study about the, the uh, Japanese people's low immune system, weak immune system. And he came to the conclusion that it's because from when they're very, very young, Japanese people are protected from germs because the houses are really clean, and people wear masks, and they disinfect their hands, and they're paranoid about kids getting dirty. And, and he came to the conclusion that they, their immune systems are getting weaker because of it. And yet, he's just one voice, and nobody's really listened to him, right? So, you know, here you go, here's a professor at, Japanese, you know, at, at Tokyo University who came up to a conclusion, but nobody's listening to him because the rest of Japan all thinks something different, right? So this is why things don't change here. This is why you get these ideas that just don't change from the 50s till now, you know? So, so he said, he agreed with what the rest of the world already knows, that when kids are young, you don't want them getting really sick and dying, but a little bit of an exposure to germs and a little bit of exposure to things like that does strengthen their immune system. Um, but, you know, what you'll get here is that the mother and the mother-in-law and the aunts and everybody else, the lady next door, want to wrap the kid up, wrap the kid up and keep them... Quite often, they won't want them to go outside the house for the first three months. They try and keep them in the house for the first three months. They don't want them to go outside at all. And when eventually they do start to go outside, they're paranoid about being around other kids and they, you know, want them to wear face masks all the time and... And this will continue, this will continue, you know, I mean, there's face masks walking towards us, there's a couple of girls there, high school kids, you know, the face mask thing never ends, and the mothers, you know, the kids got a cold, or the other kids at school got a cold, and face masks and disinfectant and all sorts of, it never ends, it never ends, and they're all convinced that that's really important. And, you know, as a parent, if you say, look, I really think that it'd be good for the kids to go out and play in the dirt sometimes and get really dirty, you know, because that's healthy for kids to do because it's fun and also because it strengthens their immune system. Everybody around you is going to go, oh, that's disgusting, that's disgusting, and up and eye, up and eye, dangerous, dangerous, you know, because you're going to get germs, it's germs, germs, germ phobia, right? So there's that. <laughs> so there's just the health stuff. I mean, we could make two, three videos on the health thing. Because it, you know, it's just huge. All the, all the, a lot of really 1950s thinking when it comes to health. You know, it really, really is, and it's just a constant thing with some really funny ideas about health, and and it's really tough. It's really tough because you, you know, again, you got to pick your battles on this because a lot of the stuff you'll be wanting to fight it, and it's just a waste of time. You just got to sort of go with it, you know. And, and, and it is hard, the, the, a lot of the healthcare stuff is hard. One of them is the lack of compassion and the fact that the, the, they accept, they, they think that it's normal to have lots of pain and suffering when you come to get healthcare. As, as, as I mentioned on previous videos, the standard of the healthcare here is really good, but there's no compassion, which means that they will put kids through some serious pain they'll hold hold on to the kids and put them through pain and not show them a lot of compassion. Usually they'll laugh. The mother and the nurse and the doctor will all hold the kid, give them an injection, and if the kid screams and cries, everybody laughs. And it's just their way to sort of show that everything's okay and, you know, no big deal. But as a parent, it, it can really drive you nuts. It really can. You know, that's a really painful thing to watch your kid go through suffering and watch idiots laughing at them, you know, but it's it's not, they're not idiots, it's just, it's a different cultural thing, but that'll be your feeling, that'll be your feeling, someone's hurting your child, you know, and you'll want to go, ah, but you just got to look big picture and think, no, nah, look, it's all right, you know, they just, it's just the way they do it, and for the, for your kid, if your kid grows up here, they're going to think all this stuff's normal anyway, so they're fine, all you got to do is, that when it comes to this sort of stuff, you know, you give them the compassion, 
you know, when you when you get outside the doctor's surgery, say that was really brave, you did a good job, and that that was hard, wasn't it? But you did a good job, and you can do the compassion thing. So, so that's the healthcare again. We could talk about that for hours. It's never ending the healthcare stuff, but it's all along the same lines. Um, and then you've got, and then you've got the raising of the kids. Again, it's like the 50s. Um, hitting kids is still considered to be a normal thing to do here. You'll often see parents hit kids here. Um, actually, you get two things, two things that can drive you nuts. One is that the parents let the kids run feral, and that's really common, is that is that the kid, the mothers will just let the kids run feral, just let them run around, white, run around wild, and just let them run feral. Um, uh, or hit them. There seems to be... <laughs> The both, you see both. Um, hitting kids is still considered to be normal here. Nobody objects to it, nobody stands up to it. I saw a lady once at a, at a dojo, a karate mother she was, hardcore karate mother, and the kid did badly in his competition or something, and the mother was pounding him. He was about 12 years old probably, and she just kept, she was actually punching him in the chest, you know, and nobody says, hey, 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 you know, stop it, stop it, because it's none of their business, and they don't want to upset the harmony. So hitting kids is still normal. Letting kids run feral is still normal. So you want to say, hey, stop, stop, stop. Stop, 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 you know, and uh, no, they're just letting them run wild. Or they're hitting them. And because if you try and explain why either of those two options are not really good, <laughs> they don't understand. You know, if everybody does it, everybody does it. One classic is, is that we've showed you those previous videos, kids standing on the seats in cars without seatbelts on. And there is a law, there's a law in Japan that says kids have to wear seatbelts and be in child seats. But because most parents ignore it, and you'll see, you know, in, while we're driving around here, you'll see kids standing on the seats looking out the window, you know, because they not, haven't got a seatbelt on. And because that's normal here, everybody does it, everybody does it. And when you say, hey, hey, I don't want my kid standing with his face against the airbag because if you have a small collision, the airbag's going to go off and break his neck. Uh, they're going to go, oh, no, 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 it's normal, it's normal. You know, everybody does it, everybody does it. It's no big deal, right? And stuff like that can be a big one. I know I know one person in particular, one, one other uh, foreigner in particular whose wife just refuses to worry about the seatbelt thing and he's forever fighting that one. And, you know, his wife comes driving down the street to the house with the kids standing on the seat, face against the windscreen, and it doesn't matter how much he goes on about it, she just, no, it's normal, it's no big deal, what's your problem? Are you going on about that again? Are you upsetting the harmony again with that topic? <laughs> and, you know, it's your kid. It's your kid's safety and, and well-being that you're worried about. You know, I can think of a million examples of this too. The safety thing's a big one. They think kids playing in the rain is dangerous. So, oh, abunai, abunai, it's raining, abunai. So their idea of what's dangerous for kids, you know, the rain's dangerous for kids because you could catch a cold, you know. Um, going to school when other kids have a cold is playing in the dirt. You know, all these things that they think is dangerous for kids, we think is perfectly normal and healthy. In fact, beneficial. Um, and then when it comes to stuff that is dangerous, like standing on the seat or, you know, groups of mothers having a barbecue party around a table in a lounge room um, on a low table with a hot plate and a bunch of toddlers all climbing all over the table around the hot plate. You know, I've seen so much stuff like that where you take one look at it and go, oh, geez, you've got to be kidding, you know, or walking through car parks with the kids sort of wandering behind and cars all shooting around and two and three year old kids just wandering along a few meters behind their parents, you know, where they can't be seen by cars. And you just say, uh, you know, stuff like that, really dangerous stuff. You know, you'll see that every day in Japan, whether you've got kids or not, if you just come to Japan for a visit you, you, and travel around, you'll see stuff like this. You know, parents walking along the footpath with their kids wandering along behind, walking through car parks with the kids wandering behind, or kids just running off They'll be walking through the car park and the kids will be running ahead and there's cars are moving around or everywhere and two and three year old kids running running away from their parents through the car park and their parents are going, oh, you know, wait, wait, wait a moment. Chop them up there. There's, you know, way behind the game. Accidents waiting to happen. So, you know, as, as, a, as just a person visiting Japan, seeing these things, it, it, it can really make you tense because you're like, oh God, you know, what are you doing? Um, but 
when it's your child, of, of course, it takes it to a, a whole new level of stress. And <laughs> so, again, you know, as with the previous videos, it comes down to a lot of compromise and 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 just accepting a lot of things. And 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 it's probably the hardest when it comes to if you're talking about being married to a Japanese person and having kids with a Japanese person. It's probably this stuff with the kids because, you know, when there's no kids involved, it's just the two of you. I mean, you can either just walk away and, and give up on it and walk away, or you can just accept that you're going to have to accept a bit of stuff that you don't want to really accept. But when it's your kids, you know, those of you who are parents who have heard these things in the last 20 minutes, a lot of you will be going, oh, I couldn't handle that with my kids, I couldn't handle that with my kids, and that's the way we feel, that's often the way we feel, so. This this video probably deserves another, this, this topic probably deserves another video, because again, we're running out of time, we only do 28 minutes, guys, so, so, we're running out of time again, so, I'll see what comments we get on this, and, and what, I'll probably remember all the bits that I've forgotten that I should have mentioned, but you're sort of getting the idea, right? So we'll see, we might have to do another video on this topic yet. Yeah, it's a shocker, isn't it? <laughs> More videos coming soon.